So now that we've talked about drawing Lewis structures, so we've talked about resonance, and we've talked about formal charge, let's look at how we would go about predicting the shapes of our molecules. And I am going to um, upload a link for y'all to use some FET simulations. I will upload that link for you. But uh, after we go through this lesson and talk about it in class some more. So the way that we predict the shapes of our molecules is we use the VSEPR theory, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And so we say VSEPR for short. And just like the acronym, explanation of the acronym states, the VSEPR theory is based on the assumption that electrons repel each other. This repulsion causes them to be arranged as far apart as possible. So your molecular structure is classified according to the number of bonding and non-bonding electron pairs around your central atom. Again, the molecular structure, the geometry of your molecule is classified by the number of bonding and non-bonding electron pairs around the central atom. When you're trying to determine your um, VSEPR shape, you first have to draw your Lewis structure. That's the key, drawing the Lewis structure correctly. Make sure you arrange your atoms or electrons around the central atom so they're as far apart as possible. Remembering that your lone pairs take up the most space. Finally, you're going to determine the name of the structure from the positions of the atoms. There are five parent structures that we're going to look at. I call them parent structures. And then you have your, what I call daughter structures that can be derived from them. Our parent structures um, you're going to notice here it's, it mentions electron domains and it mentions the arrangement of the electron domains and then electron domain geometry and the predicted bond angle. So here's your central atom in yellow. So when you think of um, electron domains, it's referring to the areas um, where electrons are occupied. So this would be your electron domain. There's two electron domains here. So no lone pairs on the central atom. Here this has three electron domains but no lone pairs. One, two, three, four electron domains. One, two, three, four, five electron domains. And one, two, three, four, five, six electron domains. And these are our expanded octets. The trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral are new to AP Chem. And so um, we're going to talk about like how to think about the equatorial versus the axial position. And I talked about in class like a ballerina with a tutu. So this will hopefully help you visualize that a little bit better. All right, let's talk for a minute also about non-bonding um, pairs and the bond angles. So like if this the red dot represents um, a nucleus of an atom and this represents the nucleus of a second atom and they're um, sharing electrons between them, the bonding electron pairs are kind of held in between. So this would be like, it could be like a single bond or it could be a double bond or it could be a triple bond, but it's held between. So bonding electrons are kind of held in between. So they take up less space than the non-bonding. So let's say if this is like the atom and he had lone pairs over here. Okay. So these are non-bonding because they're lone pairs. So they take up more space. See how this takes up more in the domain. The electron domain of this one is greater if it's non-bonding. So keep that in mind um, because non-bonding pairs are physically longer or excuse me larger than the bonding pairs. They take up more space. Therefore their repulsions are greater and it does tend to decrease bond angles in your molecule. That's just something to keep in mind. All right let's look at our first parent structure and um, I call that linear. And so this chart has the parent structure up here. Linear has a bond angle of 180 degrees around the central atom. So if this was your X and this is two atoms attached to it, so the bond angle around the central atom is going to be 180. Now, linear daughter structure could look like this. And I would not expect y'all to draw it bent looking, but I want you to understand that you could have central atom with two atoms attached but one lone pair of electrons. Um, this should actually, for water, it would be actually two lone pairs of electrons, but you could have it two with one lone pair, which is what I have drawn here. Water is going to look like this, X with your atoms attached to it here, and you would have two lone pairs there. 
that would be like your water. But both of those would be considered vent structures. Now, if you don't have a true central atom, I want you to keep in mind that um, if there's only two atoms, the molecule, molecule is going to be linear no matter what because the only way to connect two dots, H and the F, is with a straight line. Okay, So if there's only two atoms in the molecule, the molecule has to be linear. So this is really what the molecule will look like. And when we look at our, the FET simulation, it'll make this easier since y'all don't have the models of your own. But in class, I do have models that we will use. So linear and bent. And you can call bent angular. The next structure is trigonal planar. So with trigonal planar, you have three atoms on the central atom and no lone pair. So it would look kind of like this. Here's your central atom and you have three atoms attached. The bond angle all the way around the central atom is 120 degrees. So an example would be like with boron trifluoride if you draw his Lewis structure. I would not expect y'all to draw the structure where it looks um, legit legitimately looks like it's trigonal planar. Um, when you draw your structures, it's fine with me if you leave them like, for example, BF3, you probably would draw it like this. It's okay if you redraw it. Of course, that would be great, but I wouldn't expect you to. That skipped ahead. Sorry, y'all. Get back to where. Okay, now we're back. Um, so you could just draw the BF3 like this. Remember, boron is one of the exceptions to the octet rule, and that he has to settle for uh, less than eight. Trigonal pyramidal is the daughter, one of the daughter uh, structures for this. And uh, with trigonal pyramidal, the bond angle is 107 degrees. And in this case, you have your central atom with three atoms attached, but in this case you have lone pairs on the central atom. So the bond angle is 107 degrees, and that's what happens with ammonia in H3. So notice you've got your little pyramid shape here, if you think about it in terms of a pyramid base. Trigonal pyramidal. The next one is tetrahedral. Tetrahedral bond angle is 109.5 degrees. Even though on your paper you're going to draw it where it looks uh, more like a T, so you would probably draw methane more like this. I want you to understand there's no 90 degree angle here. It looks 90 degree on paper, but this is actually going to space out evenly. All these bond angles all the way around are 109.5 degrees. Bond angle on tetrahedral is 109.5. Four atoms on the central atom and no lone pairs. Now we're getting next into our new structures. These are our expanded octets. So the parent structure is trigonal bipyramidal. And so here you have, I talked about a ballerina, this being her waist. This is her head and this is her feet. And then this is her, her triangle skirt. Okay, so this is around the equatorial region. So if it's trigonal bipyramidal, you're going to have two sets of bond angles. 120 degree bond angle and 90 degree bond angles. This is going to happen when you have five atoms on the central atom and no lone pairs. So here you have the ballerina, her body, her head and her feet, and then this is her, her tutu that I was talking about. So it's a triangle tutu. So I'm going to try to connect the triangle. There's your triangle tutu there. That's your equatorial region. Now trigonal bipyramidal has three daughter structures. The three daughter structures for trigonal bipyramidal are seesaw, T-shaped, and linear. I will show you these in class, but for the time being, please copy down the bond angles. You may want to pause the video, copy down your bond angles, and we will look at these in class in more detail. We'll also go back and we will draw these as well. But each of these examples are examples of here's your seesaw, here's your T-shape, and here's your linear. So we go back to linear. I will talk about how to know where the lone pairs go in class. Again, pause the video, and once you get this copied, move on to the next structure. Now when we look at your trigonal